You're listening to the International Moving Podcast, your guide to moving to another country, brought to you by SDC International Shipping, LA's finest. An international move is exciting. It's a time to start over, establish a new business maybe, reestablish family ties, or retire where your budget will do more for you. Please enjoy today's episode, and if you have any questions about your international move, give us a call at 888-779-3962. That's 888-779-3962. All right. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jim for SDC International Shipping. Thanks for joining me, as always, for today's podcast episode. Today, I'm going to share with you some information that I found, a publication entitled The Expat Insider, published at the end of late 2023, or maybe even early 2024, but it's for the complete year of 2023. So we're looking back over the past 12 months or so to see what countries were popular, how people viewed them from different perspectives. So these are the actual individuals who were surveyed who went through with the international move. Some of them from the United States. Actually, they were from all over the world. I'll look into that information as well and share that with you. But I thought this was fascinating because it just shows what these countries look like through the eyes of the people who are actually going ahead to make the move. Now, as it turns out, Mexico, once again, was the most popular expat destination worldwide. And the country has not only made it consistently into the top five every single year, but it's also been voted as the kind of place where it has a very friendly local population. And it's won that for two years in a row. Also, Spain, way up there at the top, it ranks as the number one place as far as the quality of life index for the second year in a row. However, results in the working abroad index are average at best. And so I guess it depends your reason for going to these countries. I was just talking to Rob, who works at SDC International, and he was telling me that The UAE, the United Arab Emirates, have become increasingly popular over the last few years for those who are looking to expand their businesses worldwide. It's a very tax-friendly, entrepreneur-friendly country, one of the most friendly in the world as far as that goes, and just a lot of people have been moving there for business reasons. Now, Mexico, of course, a lot of people have left the United States for Mexico, When I say a lot of people, I'm looking at the expat community in general. Uh, That's the number one destination. And your money will go further there than it will in a lot of the other countries that we're looking at here. In number three, we have Panama. Panama um, did very well in 2023. It didn't do as well in 2022. But like Spain, it's a country that is trying to attract Digital workers, that's one of the things that I wanted to also mention about Spain, even though it's number two and has a good quality of life, very high quality of life index, actually number one in the reviews. But there were some issues with people looking for just the average run of the mill job. It just doesn't seem to be happening for people in Spain. But when we factor in remote workers, digital nomad, so to speak, people appear to be quite happy in places like Spain and Panama. So those two countries have been focusing during 2023 on attracting people who make their living online, whether they're providing products or services or any other type of work, freelancers, digital agencies, um, just people that have online businesses. I think that we're going to see more of that in the future people creating their own jobs, so to speak. And Panama is also in the top five countries that are considered the easiest countries to get a visa for. So, for example, the other week I was talking a little bit about France and how going into 2025, it's going to be a little more difficult with more red tape if you want to get a visa for the country of France. Not to say it's super difficult, But absolutely, not all countries are created equal. 
when it comes to the ease of getting a visa. Uh, in the bottom three countries, I'll just touch on these quickly, Kuwait, Norway, and Turkey, these are countries that suffered big losses as far as the appeal for expats in 2023. So I'm not going to focus too much on those. I don't think I've ever spoken about I think there's an article about Turkey, relocating to Turkey at sdcinternationalshipping.com. You can check it out in the blog there. It was published last year if you want to know more about that country. But there are some issues there in 2023. And I guess that's why we try to update this information so much because things change from one year to the next. And in five years, you can have a totally different situation for better or for worse. But when we look at the index, the Expat Insider Index, they rate things like the quality of life, the ease of settling in, the ability to work abroad, and other essential things like digital life, housing, language, and things like that. I believe there were over 12,000 um, people participating in this survey, representing 171 different nationalities living in 172 different countries or territories worldwide. And so that's what makes this report very interesting. It's just a broad group of people that we're looking at here and finding out what they feel, what their experiences have been living in some of these countries. Now, if we break down the statistics and looking at this group of people, the uh, male-female is just about split even. And the relationship status, 57% say they are in a relationship, 43% are single. Family status, 20% with dependent uh, children, abroad, have dependent children abroad. About 80% do not have dependent children abroad. The average age, very interesting here, 46.2 years. And we go all the way up to over 61. It's funny, 25 and below, it's less than 4% or right about 4%. Looking at 61 and above is about 18%. So the average age right here is right about just a, just a hair, just a shade over 46 years. 82% have university degrees. 2% don't have any degree at all. 8% have a high school uh, diploma. Another 8% have some type of commercial or technical or vocational training. 34% have a bachelor's degree. That's interesting. 41% have a postgraduate degree, master's degree. 7% are, um, have a PhD or something similar to that. Okay, let's move on a little bit further in this report. As far as lifestyle choices go, 8% said that they were seeking a better quality of life, whereas 5% said they were looking for adventure or personal challenge. 4% said they wanted to retire abroad. 3% said they wanted to live in a, just wanted to live in a particular country or city. Another 3% said they just simply joy, enjoyed living abroad. And another 3% said they had financial reasons for making the move. Now, when we look at the planned length of stay, this is very interesting. 35% said their plan was possibly forever. And then we dropped down to 21% longer than five years. And 11% said three to five. Another 11% said one to three. 16%, believe it or not, said they were undecided. So I guess they were just going to decide when they get there and based on their experience and then go from there. So the most common countries of residence, Germany, number one, Spain, number two, the UAE, number three, USA, number four, number five, it's Switzerland, six is France, seven is the UK, eight is the Netherlands, nine is Italy, and number 10 is Canada. Okay, let's take a look at this. Now, what are the, where do the expats actually come from? Well, this shouldn't be surprising, but the number one expat nation is the United States. More people are leaving the United States than any other country in search of something different. Those are the most common nationalities of expats worldwide. 
Number two, right behind them, is the British. Three, India. Number four, German. Five, Italian. Six, French. These are nationalities again. Seven, Canadian. Eight, Dutch. Uh, nine, Philippine. And number 10, Turkish. And now we can look at some... I don't have enough time in today's episode to go over all of these. But let me just... Let's just take a quick peek at some of these more interesting ones. The best and the worst places for expats last year. Number one was Mexico. And number 53, the worst, was Kuwait. So Mexico is number one. Number two is Spain. Number three is Panama. Number four is Malaysia. Number five is Taiwan. Now, interesting with that top five, I was talking with Rob from SDC International Shipping. By the way, we have a YouTube channel, SDC International Shipping. Just look us up on YouTube. We have quite a few videos there. And uh, once every Saturday, Rob and I get together and we're on video, so it's a little different. It's a, a video type of podcast. We talk about different things related to international moving, international shipping. And I ran this by him in a recent episode the top five here. He understood Mexico, Spain, and Panama. These are places that SDC International Shipping moves people to on a regular basis. So if you contact SDC, just know that these are places that people are are moving to every week. So it's not a big deal to move to these countries because there are systems in place. I mean, there's systems in place for every country, but these countries are super popular. But number five, Taiwan, he was a little surprised about that simply because Taiwan is one of those countries that, you know, is it going to be a, a political hotbed in the not too distant future? Is China going to move in and kind of take over there? What's going to actually happen? Is it going to be a, a piece of land that's going to be struggled over? I call it a piece of land, but it kind of looks like that on the map as compared with other countries. But OK, number six is Thailand. Number seven is Costa Rica. An interesting thing about Costa Rica, very sought after um, expat destination, has grown so much in recent years. More houses, more condominiums, more of everything. A major hospital is being built as a result of it to to, uh, serve the ever-growing community. I have to wonder if Costa Rica, as beautiful as it is, is really going to have that long-term viability that people might hope that it would. So if you decide to retire to Costa Rica, for example, and you're thinking that you know maybe your money's going to go further, you're going to enjoy the lifestyle there, you may wind up experiencing something that we're familiar with here in the United States in the state of Florida, where suddenly this area, this location becomes so overgrown where the infrastructure is not able to keep up with the influx of people, and therefore suddenly the housing prices rise, insurance prices rise, the prices of utilities doubles, and then suddenly you have issues. And so for the first time uh, since I've been aware of Costa Rica as a popular destination, I would put a question mark next to it because... It's one thing if you're going to Costa Rica and you're going to enjoy it for a year or two. But if you're thinking about moving there, take it from somebody who's already lived in two places that started out as uh, lower population, plenty of uh, natural surroundings, I guess, if you would. Everywhere you turn, you're not going to see another house or building. It was um, and this is twice I've experienced this in my life. First came when. My family moved to the Jersey Shore in the late 1960s. And I remember that there were a few houses in my neighborhood and there was a chicken coop sort of kind of across the street on an angle. And you could hear the chickens from my house. You know how the chickens are very lively. (laughs) A a rooster crowing every morning and uh, fresh eggs were a common thing, common staple back then. There wasn't but, I think, one store that you could get milk at. Fast forward 20 years later. Now, of course, that took some time, but it's just a metropolis with 
huge uh, homes and high crime and the days of the fields with the cows are a thing of the past. Now, when we relocated to Florida back in the uh, early 1990s, it was the same thing in the town that I moved to, except there the growth happened in half that time. In about a decade, the entire place became unrecognizable. And so what I did was I moved one town south. My idea was I don't, I'm don't i not the type of person that enjoys cold weather. And so I was looking to get away from the icy winters of the northeast. And I also enjoyed the fact that living in the state of Florida back in the 1990s was considered to be affordable living, buying a home much cheaper, around $80,000, $85,000, $90,000 dollars to buy a decent home. Uh, a condo is what I ended up buying. And it was getting away from the place that had turned into a city, basically. And so I saw that happen in the 10-year span in uh, where I moved to in Florida. Then I moved one town south that was a little more developed anyway. And then I saw the same thing happen here. It was already developed here, but it literally became a city within a span of about five to seven years. And so we see growth happening exponentially, and I believe that part of it is due to the fact that now that the online world is firmly established and in place, as soon as there's a hot place to move to or live, uh, maybe it offers be beautiful scenery, affordable health care, whatever, housing, which is inexpensive, then masses of people find out about it and Relocating is not difficult anymore. Sure, there's a lot of moving parts to it, but compared to the old days, I mean, it's all of the processes are quite reliable. Uh, 99 out of 100 times, you're not going to have any trouble as far as safety goes with shipments. I say 99 out of 100 because we had the incident in Baltimore, um, what was about a month or so ago, with the um, ship crashing into the bridge. So, I mean, things like that do happen, but that's not like an everyday occurrence, kind of like that with the airlines, with incidents that happen there. So I guess what I'm saying is once a place becomes popular, then, you know, you can't count on it staying uh, like it was and having those elements remain in place that created its desirability in the first place. And I think Florida, at least where I live, is an excellent example of that. So that was number seven on the top locations. Number eight is the Philippines. Number nine is Bahrain. Number 10 is Portugal. Right after that, number 11. And now 11 is the UAE, the United Arab Emirates. I think that's going to change in the new year because so many people are moving there for business opportunities. People are opening businesses there, extending businesses there for another location. And again, it's a very... Um, how would we say, entrepreneurial, friendly type of country. Okay, let's, let's go on a little bit further. Um, where expats, the, the top findings that, let me just bring this out here again, Mexico. Mexico has continuously ranked in the top five since 2014. And it's been that way because of the ease of settling in, the ease of getting started, uh, personal finances, work, quality of life. These are the things that fit into the best and the worst. The Spain, number two, people appreciate the culture. There's a lot of leisure options there. Um, everything is lives up to people's expectations for the most part, which is why it ranks number two. So if you read about the desirability of Spain. Friends of ours also moved there and they really enjoy it there. They moved there two years ago. Um, number one with uh, Panama, which came in at number three, is about housing. It's probably more, e it's probably easier to find housing in Panama, affordable housing, nice housing, than any other place on this list. And then, of course, all the way at the bottom, if you want to compare the top three to the bottom, Three, fifty-three was Kuwait, fifty-two was Norway, fifty-one was Turkey. Those are the bottom three, counting from the last up. 
Um, all right, let's let me get through some more information here. Okay, so quality of life, leisure options. Spain, number one for both quality of life. Taiwan, believe it or not, number two, followed by Finland, followed by the UAE, followed by Australia. So if we wanted to look at the top five as far as when asked the question about the quality of life, Spain, Taiwan, Finland, the UAE, and Austria round up the top five. So let me keep going. We'll look at the top ten. Number six is Singapore. Seven is Portugal. Eight is Switzerland. Nine is Luxembourg. Ten is Denmark. As far as leisure options go, we'll look at the top ten. Number one is Spain. Like I said, they're there. Number one for quality of life and leisure options. Number two is Mexico. Three, Hong Kong. Four, Colombia. Five, Brazil. Six, the UAE. Seven, Thailand. Eight, Portugal. And nine, for leisure options, the United States. Yeah, believe it or not, there are expats here in the United States. I know if you're American and you're talking about expats, in your mind, the first thing you think of are Americans living abroad. But you have to realize that there are people from the UK and Canada and other places, Germany, who have relocated here to live in the United States. It's a huge, and it's funny how, I wonder if this is more of the grass is greener on the other side mentality, whereas if you're American, you're used to things being a certain way. You've been born here. You've been raised here. You more or less know the best and the worst based on your life experience. Then you move to another country, and people tell me that, well, what is it like after you live in another country, let's say five years, and you look back to what you came from in America? And what people basically have told me is this. You are exchanging one set of problems for a different set of problems. But then they go on to add, especially if they like the location, that the different set of problems is more palatable than the set of problems they left the country uh, for. And so that's just something to think about. Uh, healthcare. Number one is Taiwan. Number two, South Korea. Three, Qatar. Four, Spain. Five, Luxembourg. Six, France. Seven, Japan. Eight, Austria. Nine, Thailand. And ten, the UAE, the United Arab Emirates. So you can see there that some of these countries rank in the top ten in all of the areas. Quality of life, leisure options, travel and transit, health care. Let's talk about safety and security. Number one, Luxembourg. Number two, Switzerland. Number three, Finland. Four, Denmark. Five, Netherlands. Six, Norway. Seven, Portugal. Eight, Taiwan. Number nine, the UAE. And number 10, Estonia. Now it's funny, I look at Taiwan and I think as far as safety and security, that one I would put a little asterisk by because, again, you know that there could be some contention there between the U.S., the U.K., and China. This is something that comes up from time to time. What would happen if the Chinese turned aggressive and wanted uh, Westerners out of Taiwan? <coughs> Excuse me. Something hasn't happened yet, but it's something that people keep in mind. Uh, okay, let's look at one last area. I'm kind of running out of time here. Maybe we'll pick this up in the next episode. Climate and environment. Number one, Switzerland. Number two, Finland. Three, Costa Rica. Four, Sweden. Five, Portugal. Six, Australia. Seven, Spain. Eight, New Zealand. Nine, Australia. And ten, Canada. It's interesting that Canada was chosen. For me, Canada, like some of these other countries, a little bit cold weather there. I guess it depends on what type of climate that you like. If you like cold, a colder climate, then you would rank maybe that a little bit higher. Whereas people like myself who go south in the United States to escape the cold, we would be more apt to look at a place on this list like a Spain or Costa Rica possibly. So, so okay, 
let me just put the bookmarker in it there. There's so much interesting information. I just was excited to share it with all of you who listen to this podcast. Now, SDC International Shipping has been moving people just like yourself, individuals, families, couples, young and old, and everything in between to these countries now going on 15 years. We have the system down to a science. You can speak to someone live at the phone. You just go to sdcinternationalshipping.com. If you want to chat with someone, we have live chat available on the website. Let me pull this site up quickly so I can just share a few things with you. You can call directly at 877-339-0267. If you're the type of person that just wants to speak with a live person, get your questions answered directly, you can do that. We also have live chat available on the site about 24-7. There's usually somebody there that will chat with you, give you whatever information that you're looking for. If you want a free quote, you can do that too. We have a form on the front page. You just fill in where you're moving from, where you're moving to. You fill in all of the fields and you get started in the process. Then what will happen is you will be contacted by someone and they'll want to get eyes on exactly what it is that you're moving, which is important. So they'll do a chat with you to see what you have, um, what things may require special attention. Maybe you have some antique items, china cabinets, things that are very delicate. And so all of those things will be taken into account when we're looking at your individual needs. And that's why SDC International Shipping really stands out as the international mover of choice for many people. Because anyone can ship items from point A to point B, all things being equal. But here at SDC, we choose to make your experience a very personalized one, recognizing that no two moves are exactly alike. And what's important to you may not be important to someone else and vice versa. So if you have some items you're concerned about, then we'll talk to you about special wrapping options, custom crating, which is available. And SDC is a door-to-door household shipping company, which means they'll take care of everything from your home, where you're currently located, get everything packed if you want. All the packing can be done for you. All the wrapping can be done for you. The advantage to that is you know it's done by a professional. If you've ever tried wrapping before and packing before, you know that if you're not used to it, it can be kind of slow and difficult. And when you're finished, your items may not be as secure as you'd hope they'd be. So that's something that for most people I would recommend leaving to the professionals. And then from there, it will be decided what type of container that all your items need, what type of, type of container that it will fit in. Maybe you're moving a vehicle that will be put inside of a, a container also along with your household goods. Or maybe you don't have enough items to fill an entire container. And as a result, SDC offers groupage um, container shipping where your items will be packed along with items belonging to other customers that are going to the same destination. If you want information about that, they'll be happy to help you with that. They'll talk about it with you over the phone or through chat or whatever your preferred means of communication is. So I think that's about all for today. I just want to let you know what's going on in the world at large, share with you some information from the expat community, and uh, let you know that when you have your plans, your visas, and all of those things in place, we're here at SDC to be your partner the rest of the way, to get all of your items from wherever you are to wherever you need to be and have everything arrive in the same condition in which it left. So this is Jim. Thanks for listening to today's episode. As always, if you can, share it with a friend. And I will see you next week in the next episode. Bye for now. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for listening. Whether you're relocating within the country or moving to the other side of the world, we're here to help from start to finish. Connect with us today at 888-779-3962. That's 888 888- 779-3962.